Welcome to the Power Foods Lifestyle Podcast. I'm your host, Christy Doe, mind and body strategist and fitness nutrition specialist. You're listening to episode number 231, postpartum and breastfeeding. As a strategist, I'm passionate about helping you learn how to become a strategist of your own health and body using science-backed evidence, anecdotal principles proven effective in my coaching, and psychological awareness. Be sure to hit that subscribe button on your podcast player so you don't miss any future episodes. Okay, PFL champs, let's now move into today's discussion. We're going to be talking about a lot of things when it comes to postpartum and breastfeeding, nutrition, and supplementation. As many of you know, I recently gave birth six weeks ago to a beautiful baby girl. This is my first child, and it's been exciting to apply all of the principles that I've been teaching and helping others apply for years. And it it's always a good experience to do that because when you are in the trenches, it forces you to look a little bit differently at the principles. So I'm excited to share not just those principles today, but also my personal experience as I have been trying to live them and some of the mindset behind that as well. As you know, psychology is extremely important in what we choose to do with our nutrition and 75%, if we throw a number out there, of changing our nutrition behavior is really about addressing what's going on inside of our thoughts and our emotions and how we're managing our life and having a child, whether it's your first or whether it's your sixth, (laughs) it is a stress invoking experience um, because of so much change and adaptation, not to mention the hormonal shifts in and of themselves, which are are a very real thing because um, yes, you can't even predict where they're going, whether you're up or down, or one day you wake up crying, the next day you're angry, the next day you're chill. And all of you ladies who've been where I am at right now, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So today I'm going to teach you some nutrition principles. We will talk about dealing with fatigue of the constant waking and, you know, you're up every two to three hours and that's even for a relatively quote unquote good baby. I can't even imagine if, you know, there were other conditions or things that had your baby waking up a little bit more. My baby is um, thankfully very mild temperament and been relatively enjoyable to (laughs) wake up to every two and a half to three hours at this point in the journey. Fatigue and the constant thinking and the the mental fatigue, the decision fatigue, that's a very real thing for new moms, not to mention functioning on a very minimal energy level as well. We'll talk about how to manage those hormones and how to manage the emotions that are all over the place. And then we will talk about some recommended calories and macros. Just please know I'm not going to be giving extremely specific because it's all nuanced and it's all relative to you. However, I will give you some starting points as well as some of the approaches I have taken with myself to not even micromanage those things, but still hit some good targets to ensure good milk supply while burning off some of this pregnancy body fat. And then we will talk about milk supply, some supplementation that can help, some of the nutrition that will help. And I'm sure that will be a threaded conversation throughout this entire time together. So thank you for being here with me, uh, whether you are a new mom or whether this is you you're preparing you're pregnant now you are preparing to have another child you just want to be set up really well or you're listening to this in order to help another person because they're just so overwhelmed so maybe you can make it easier you do all the hard work of learning and taking the notes and just getting the absolute solutions and the the implementation points that would be very helpful as well so if there's any husbands or partners out there listening to this good for you trying to make this a little bit easier for your partner first and foremost nutrition principles let's revisit basic power foods lifestyle principles that we need to know as these are absolutely fundamental to any part of our life, whether we are in our just, you know, we're not really in pregnancy or we're not nursing or we're not postpartum, anything like that. These nutrition principles are beneficial for you at any point in your journey. Uh, just, Just basic living, let alone that in pregnancy and then in postpartum, these principles are always going to apply. So let's review. An anchor to a meal is a PV, which is your protein and veggie. Then carbs is their own category. This is an energy nutrient and fats are an energy nutrient. An exercise I like to take clients through is getting out a piece of paper 
and we write down all four of those categories and then we brainstorm three to five foods that you regularly eat, you enjoy, that we can make happen. And so go ahead and pause this and do that for me because this this can't be just about knowledge. You have to implement a system and to make these things happen. Otherwise, you will walk away from this podcast being like, cool, I know what to do, but nothing will change in your life. So please do yourself the favor, pause this and workshop it as we go. So protein, make your list. This can include your chicken, your turkey, beef, any fish, some dairy products like cottage cheese or plain Greek yogurt. You can do protein powders. Uh, I would personally recommend doing a bone broth powder. Check out the brands Sun Cow Grass and Ancient Nutrition. I will have those linked up in the show notes if you just like quick links to those on Amazon. So just write down some of those proteins that you like, something that is very common for me with my grocery list each week. I'm always getting some chicken breast. Sometimes I do buy chicken thigh and I just trim them very well, get the fat off there. And I also buy uh, some turkey breast, some nitrate-free deli style turkey breast. Uh, we have a cow share, and so we our, free, our freezer is packed full of some beef, different cuts and so forth. It's grass-fed from Idaho, and so we, we don't really buy that because it's already in the freezer, but that is something to put on your list if you don't have a cow share in your freezer. Other proteins that I typically buy, I kind of go off and on from plain Greek yogurts. I don't buy a lot of cottage cheese personally. If you've listened to my podcast for quite some time, you'll know I've kind of been a anti-dairy person. However, during my pregnancy and afterward, I chose to implement dairy more into my life, specifically in the form of cow's milk, uh, mostly post postpartum, that's cow's milk 2%, and also some cheese. We do cheese sticks uh, for a fat in the F category, and then also the occasional yogurt. And sometimes, especially during pregnancy, I did not buy like the low sugar or anything like that. Like I just, full sugar, 20 grams of sugar, here we go. And so not that I'm necessarily recommending that, but there, there is no perfection in this, and so you kind of have to pick and choose your battles, you know. And if, and if a yogurt, sugary snack sounds good to you, and the rest of your meals are really balanced, then go for it. That's great. And that's kind of been my mindset uh, during this process. So other meats that I typically buy, sometimes I will get some shrimp once in a while. Uh, fish is not my favorite. I very rarely buy it. If I do buy it, it's going to be either salmon or some tilapia. But I have not bought that in quite some time. So that's kind of the the protein list listed out there. Then we move into vegetables. Some of the common vegetables I buy, let's start with the water-based category. So baby carrots, celery, cucumber, bell pepper. I try and get different colors each week. Tomatoes technically are a fruit, but we do count them in the veggie category in the Power Foods lifestyle. Next categories are leafy greens. I currently have some romaine, some green leaf lettuce, and some spinach in the fridge. Other leafy greens you might consider include mustard greens, red chard, kale, things like that. You know, sometimes in my salads, especially because I like bulky salads, I will usually do kind of a a 50-50, a one-to-one ratio of shredded iceberg because you can just buy that for like a buck or two and, and interweave that with your dark greens. It takes away a lot of the bitterness. It adds more volume. And I don't know, I've just really enjoyed that. That's a new habit. I've only done that for probably two or three months and I really enjoy it. So that's kind of a habit when I'm buying my dark leafy greens. I also grab a bag of pre-shredded iceberg lettuce and that can be a great way to uh, make sure you're enjoying those greens. Uh, So that's our leafy greens category. Then we move into cruciferous. That's your broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts. I tend to rotate through all three of those regularly. So right now I have both broccoli and cauliflower in my fridge. Last week was a Brussels sprouts week as well as, yeah, we did broccoli last week too. And so I just regularly rotate through those. I try never to hit all foods from all categories every week. You got to have a rotation schedule, which the way I'm describing this, listing it out for you is going to make it very easy And then our final category is miscellaneous. So this includes things like zucchini and summer squash or pumpkin or asparagus. And right now I have zucchini and summer squash in my fridge. Uh, This past week, we cooked up a butternut squash in the Instant Pot and mixed that with a little bit of honey, some cinnamon, some cloves. 
and that made a really yummy puree. It's like a pudding and, and that's a nice way. I enjoy that, those types of carbs for like my meal too, my 10 a.m. snack or my afternoon snack, 3 p.m. or so, especially when you want something a little bit sweeter and it's a great option. And especially right now, I'm recording this in November. It is prime season. We want to try and eat foods when they are in season. And it's not that it's bad to eat them out of season, but my goodness, why not focus on the ones that are in season and make those dominant? Let's for sure make sure we get those in there. So that's a a great way to get some of those miscellaneous vegetables in there. Now remember, based on the volume you eat, it could turn into a carb. If you are having more than two cups of one of those more carby fibrous vegetables, then you are climbing up in the carbohydrate content, which once you hit 20 grams of carbs, 15 to 20 grams of carbs, we need to start counting that as a C or a carbohydrate in the power foods lifestyle, just to make sure that we are aware. It's not that you can't, it's just awareness that those carbs are climbing up there. And if you have some target goals, then that's not a problem. And With the goal of postpartum uh, body fat loss slowly enough to maintain milk supply if that is your goal then yeah we do need to keep carbs up and so doing pumpkin and squashes things like that those are really great ways to make sure we're getting some of those fibrous carbs in next is going to be our carbohydrate category so this is where we focus on oats whole oats i'm not really a fan a huge fan i mean it's not that they're bad they've just been processed a little bit more of the instant oats i personally just buy normal oats i'm not a fan of steel cut oats if you like them great uh number one they're expensive number two they really have no superior uh nutritional value over regular rolled oats and so i like oats and then that's something that is always available in my home lentils that is our number one carbohydrate very low glycemic index powerful nutrition components i just used some lentils to make a little stew this week in the instant pot by cooking them on the rice setting and then once they were done cooking adding a little bit more water adding some cubed red potatoes some cubed chicken some sliced celery and carrots seasoning it with some um some chicken bouillon, some garlic salt, and pepper, sea salt, and celery salt. That's kind of my typical go-to when I'm seasoning a, uh, a stew or soup or something like that. And then just put the lid back on, pushed it to manual, and moved it to 10 minutes, cooked it again, and boom, have a really nice uh, soup. And in fact, most of the water actually got cooked up, and so it turned into more of like this thick porridge. And that's actually what I had for breakfast. It's fast it's in the fridge. I can just scoop it into a bowl, microwave it. It's delicious. And so that's a great way to have lentils. I know that a lot of times it's just not knowing how to cook these foods. And so if you are in that category and you're like, Hey, Christy, like I know these foods are good for me, but I just I can't get to a point where it tastes good. The best thing to do is go to Instagram. Make sure you're following me at power foods lifestyle and send me a DM and say, hey, like this is a food I want to eat. I don't like it. And the way I've been trying to cook it is this way. Can you show me a better way? Do you know how much I would love to then take that message and do something with that food and cook it in my kitchen and use it as an Instagram story to help you out? I would absolutely be thrilled to do that. So Um, definitely get me working on that. Get me, get me working for you so that I can make this lifestyle change happen for you. Again, that's at power foods lifestyle on Instagram. Other carbs to be eating include our berries family. So raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, those are all fantastic. Apples, grapefruit, pears, oranges. These are actually all fruits that I have rotated through and eaten in the past week. I usually buy no more than two select fruits per week and get enough for both my husband and me to be eating uh, each day. And so if you know that's apples and grapefruit, then I bought six grapefruit. So that would get us through three days, both of us. And then the remaining four days, that, that means I would buy eight apples. And so that's how I go about buying my fruit. And it makes sure, because I have a very set schedule, like I grocery shop every single week, either on a Saturday or a Monday, depending on what's going on, that we have the food needed for our our approach, our nutritional approach. And if we either miss a meal or overeat a meal, then that means our food number is going to be off for the week. And, and so I don't know, this just, it saves the budget. It 
saves our waistlines. It just does a lot of good. So I hope that you are getting to a point where you have a better system as well in your home. Not that we're ever going to hit it on the head and be perfect with it, but this, this is helping the, with the, the the how to, right? And implementing it, making it happen. Now I've got to move a little bit more quickly here. So back to the cards, the beans family is fantastic. I'm constantly cycling between black beans, pinto beans, white beans, and then rices. I mix a black forbidden rice, which I can get from the bulk bins. I love it with a long grain basmati or brown rice. And that tends to be a carb that we're using maybe every other day or so. Red potatoes, sweet potatoes, these are things I cycle through. Last night in my grocery shopping, I bought five red potatoes that we will use at some point or different points during the week. And those are our primary carbs. Now, it's not to say you can't eat other carbs. Here's some other carbs that I also bought that may shock you. I got a family-sized box of wheat thins. I got a bunch of bananas because Nate likes them. Some of the Nature Valley granola bars that they're kind of the hard ones, not like a soft, gushy one. And then I found some other kind of flaxseed oat bites uh, on sale. So I was like, okay, I'll try these. They're by the Melissa's brand. I'll hook you up with a link in the show notes if you want to try them because they're absolutely delicious. And especially when you're trying to maintain your milk supply, sometimes we want like better options for carbs. And I think this is a really good way to have a yummy carbohydrate in there. So go into the show notes and click on the oat bites. Let's move on to the fats category. This is really important, especially for when we're experiencing hormonal shifts. Fats are key for the regulation of hormones and sex hormones, growth hormones, reproductive hormones. These are all super important, not only for body fat distribution, but also managing our moods. And so let's make sure that we are definitely focusing on these healthy fats, because if we do not intentionally bring them into your diet, they usually do not happen. You may get plenty of fat grams, but it's not the right type of fat. So avocado, all of the healthy oils like extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, avocado oil, those are the three in my home. If you have vegetable oil in your home and you can just bite the bullet, just throw it out. Like there is no point for that to be in your home. Same thing with shortening. That's a really tricky one too. And, and I get that we're all different, but here's my, my mentality. I only buy very small packages of white sugar, white flour, even like corn syrup and it's usually on a per need basis which is so rare in my world and it's usually if I'm making a baked good for a get together or some event that I've been asked to cook something for you know and it's not like I'm going to impose all my nutrition principles on everyone else because then I would come home with a plate of untouched cookies or whatever it be and, and so there's a line there that we have to be careful of but when it comes to cooking and baking in my own home sure I'm going to use better ingredients or make very small quantities of one of those foods that, that use those foods. So again, it's not being extreme and saying, I absolutely don't touch those foods. However, let's definitely practice some wisdom and moderation around them. So other fats include your olives, all types of olives, fatty fish, like the salmon, sardines are really great. I only ate sardines once during my pregnancy. I just can't really do the fishiness, but if you can, fantastic. Those omegas are beautiful for your body and anti-inflammatory for brain building. They have all the DHA and the EPA that is needed for brain development uh, for your baby as well as for yourself and to protect yourself from um, any breakdown. Other fats to include are your nuts family. So the top ones would be almonds, walnuts, Brazil nuts, pecans, all of these raw of course. Pistachios are great. And then seeds, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, flax seeds, chia seeds. I'm not a huge flax and chia seed fan unless they come pre-cooked in a recipe like those oat bites. However, the ones that I usually buy two or three, like maybe pecans, walnuts, and pumpkin seeds. And then I would mix those up in little Ziploc baggies, an eighth to a fourth of a cup. Um, an eighth of a cup is an F, eight to 12 grams of fat in the Power Foods lifestyle. So that means a quarter cup, one fourth of a cup would be four tablespoons. That would be two Fs, a double F, which that's where it's not just eight to 12 grams. It would be 16 to 24 grams of fat. So that's just a way we monitor uh, portion sizes and so forth. If you're getting deeper into the Power Foods lifestyle like that. 
And so those are the basics that I have in my home that I've been cycling through and that are really, really helpful to focus on making this 80 to 90% of your diet when you are pregnant or in postpartum to ensure that you are getting everything you need, but also passing on to your baby. The foods we choose to eat do impact our babies, whether in pregnancy and growing that cute little baby, or whether it is on the postpartum side and passing that on through our milk. So let's just work on improving those choices. The basic power foods lifestyle choices to remember of meal construction is PVC, protein, veggie, carb. That's a meal type. A different meal type is PVF, protein, veggie, fat. And the third meal type is PVCF, protein, veggie, fat, carb. Now, if you have followed me on any of my accounts, whether it be Power Foods Pregnancy, which is where I talk about not only pregnancy, but also the postpartum weight loss experience and I am in the baby years, and so definitely if if I'm not either on one of those sides, those phases of pregnancy or postpartum, then I will definitely be sharing information that just relates to where other people may be at. But otherwise, it's kind of my personal journey just to share. I, I teach as I share, and so I, I hear really good feedback about it. But Power Foods Pregnancy and then Power Foods Lifestyle, you'll see that it's never just like one food from each category. Maybe it is, but it doesn't have to be. So what I'm saying is if it's a PVCF, which is the main type of meal we want to be eating in pregnancy and postpartum to make sure that we are spread very diversely through those nutrients, then it's okay to have two sources of fats. Like if my salad has olives, olive oil, and avocado, okay, that was three fats. That's perfectly fine. Not a big deal. We just want to remember that we want each of those nutrients present And then of course, let our appetite dictate just how much we are eating, but make sure each category is present. And that's basically the level of focus that you should have on macros and calories in pregnancy and postpartum. When it comes to maintaining your milk supply, we number one, want to make sure you're eating a smaller meal every two and a half to three hours. So frequency of eating is key. I have found the power of setting alarms in my phone is huge. So I have reminders go off. I have literally six alarms that go off in my phone. The first one starts at eight, the next one's at 10.30 and then 1 p.m. And then I believe it's 3.30 and then a six and then another 8.30. And yes, I do eat in the middle of the night if I feel like it. There's no rule I have to, there's no rule that I can't. Uh, It's if I'm hungry, if my stomach feels ready and it's not like a fatigue eating and like, oh, I'm just tired and bored and mad that I have to wake up and feed the baby or whatever it is, whatever emotions you're feeling, like that's the only guideline around that. And I haven't really struggled too much with that personally, just because I do eat plenty during the day. So I'm not feeling nutritionally deprived. And when you're drinking enough water, it is incredible how that helps as well to stave off any sugar cravings. And then the third thing being, make sure you don't have those things available in your home as much as possible and maybe you have kids and husband that do want those things in your home and that that's tricky of course and so maybe just set up some guidelines like set yourself up a little snack size ziploc baggie with a small handful of some sugary cereal you can munch on while you're nursing or pumping and that is maybe what you need or maybe you say no if i'm gonna wake up i'm going to have like a cheese stick or i'm going to have a turkey roll up on some green leaf lettuce or i'm going to have a handful of almonds or walnuts and and so just write down what it is you're going to do. There's no right or wrong, like, oh, you have to have a protein or you have to have a carb or you have to have a fat. No. What does your body feel like? Let's focus on your main meals during the day, being balanced, being well diversified through the nutrients. And that's the key that we want to focus on. Dealing with the fatigue of waking when it comes to just being tired and feeling that build up. I did feel like for the first three weeks postpartum that I was running on adrenaline. I didn't feel tired. I didn't feel anything about waking up in the night. I was just like, oh my gosh, my beautiful baby. I'm so happy to wake up and feed you. And this is great. And I can't believe that other people complain about this. Yeah, just adrenaline. (laughs) And then it wore off. And the reality hit and this fatigue started to build up. And so a few different things. Number one, everyone says this, and I know you're probably sick of hearing it. I got sick of hearing it too. When your baby sleeps, you sleep. Yeah, and it's so hard because there's so much we want to do. Dishes, meal prep, shower, uh, clean up things. Maybe you, I mean, whether it's pump or you need, maybe you're working, you want to do things. For me, it was always like, oh, I want to do that podcast. I want to work on that book. I want to do this or that, you know, and, and instead being like, nope, if baby just went to sleep, I am setting the timer for 60 minutes or so or until the baby wakes up and I am going to sleep. And so really take that opportunity if you can if you're not working or you don't have the 
schedule or you have other kids, like if you have the, the circumstance, take it to take the nap. That's huge in fighting that fatigue. Secondly, something that I personally find helpful and I'm not recommending this. I'm just telling you what I have done. So please do your own research and do what's best for you. I'm not a coffee drinker, but as many of you long-term listeners know in the past, in my single years, I was a big time caffeine person and have had to really work on that propensity and that reliance that I had. So I've been very cautious because for almost nine months now, well, no longer, because as soon as I found out I was pregnant, like the day after, because I totally, I was like, yeah, that's, that's, that's going to be the one. <laughs> I just knew. Um, I cut all caffeine. I was on pain meds at the time. I cut everything. Literally the next morning I woke up and I was like, yep, we're done with everything just in case. Like I could never forgive myself if I didn't, if I didn't cut all those things and something happened and I knew that I was doing things that weren't necessarily going to be a good environment for a fetus to be um, growing in for that conception to be good. And so I have been caffeine free for almost, well, not caffeine free, but very, very, very low minimal. So what I'm saying is once in a while, I do actually drink like a 12 ounce Coke Zero. Um, I have a rule for myself. I try not to do any more than two per week. And it's always with an abundant hydration level. Um, And then I do Yerba Mate, which is about 80 milligrams of caffeine per cup. Perfectly fine and healthy, safe to do while pregnant and postpartum. However, if you are postpartum, I'm going to share with you this little tip. So caffeine does pass through breast milk. And so I don't want a wired baby. I don't want that touching her system as much as possible. And so the only time I allow myself to do one cup a day is any time of day I want, that's fine. But it will be immediately after nursing or pumping. I will not do it any other time. And so that gives me a good, you know, two to three hours, depending on the the feeding cycle for that next round, that gives time for it to pass through my system and get out of it. So that's very helpful. I like it a lot. I put my mug in, in the microwave for a minute and 10 seconds. That's the magic number for me. And then I throw in my little packet and I just use my spoon and stir it up, wait for it to cool off for about three to four minutes. And then I drink it usually pretty quick within five minutes. It doesn't taste great. I'm not drinking it for the taste. I'm drinking it um, so that I can get my bearings a little bit more, feel a little bit more alert without overdoing it. And it's extremely helpful for those times of the day that I need to get things done uh, where I I just need that focus and that level of feeling put together. So if that's helpful to you, take it. The next thing I want to talk about is the fatigue of constant thinking. I'm going to share with you this app I found. Now, depending on when in the future you're listening to this, maybe this is obsolete or maybe something cool and newer has come out. But I looked and searched and found this app called Baby Tracker. And I am in love with it because those first four weeks, I was crazy. I was like, tracking every little thing from her feeds to her poops to her sleeping to everything my pumping how many ounces I was pumping and and so forth and it got super obsessed and very like that's all my brain had room for and it just got to the point where I just had mental fatigue from thinking about every little thing that I had to do for her. When did she eat last? Oh my gosh, when did she sleep last? How many hours has she slept? It's exhausting. And so once I found this app and I could start tracking in the app when she went to sleep, when she woke up, how long that sleep was and see a graph or when was the last time I changed her and was it wet or was it dirty, you know, or mixed or, or poopy or whatever it was, um, did I give breast milk or did I get formula or anything like that? Um, what about pumping? Like how many minutes on the left? How many minutes on the right? How many ounces did I produce? And so forth. This app has thought of everything. You could just totally tell it's made by parents. So I am the biggest fan of it because now, number one, I'm staying in front of her needs. Meaning if she's fussy, I never think about, oh, what does she need? I look at my app and I'm like, oh, that, that makes sense. She's you know, hasn't been asleep for three hours. She's probably tired. And I see, yeah, I changed her diaper within the past 30 minutes. She's fed within the past 30 to 60 minutes. So there's no explanation other than she's overtired. I'm going to do those steps to swaddle her, to turn, dim the lights, turn on some sound machine and let's get her to sleep. And do you know what all like staying ahead of her needs and anticipating those needs, using these timers and starting to sense her cycles, like it has really made a huge difference. And I don't ever have a fussy baby. And and I know that probably doesn't going to work for everyone. And 
I'm just sharing my experience. So that is really important because decision fatigue, especially if you're adding into it, oh, I need to eat a meal. Oh, I need to do my grocery shopping. Oh, I need to prep some of these meals. Oh, I want to lose this this baby weight, which by the way, it's going to be slow. It's going to be slow. Patience is the biggest thing we have to work on. I'm working on it every single hour of every single day because yeah, if you push way too hard, you could probably, you could have the discipline to lose the weight, but are you going to sacrifice your milk supply? Some women are okay with that. Other women aren't. So I personally, I would love to feed my baby as long as possible with my breast milk. And so therefore I need to practice patience to keep my calorie intake high enough to produce that milk. And so for me, I did experiment a little bit. 16 to 1700 calories for me was too low. And that's so ironic because formerly in all my years, I could eat 15, 14 to 1600 calories per day, somewhere in there, that, that range. And that was like a good, like that would cut me up. Like that would get me really, really to the point of being ripped. And now, so I want to lose this body fat. You know, I've got 20 pounds to go, but I need need more. And so adding 400 to 500 calories on top of that for how much milk I'm producing, which I would say I'm very moderate milk producer. I'm not, I'm not, oh my gosh, like overflowing here, but I, I'm also not too light and barely producing. And so I do feel making sure you have enough calories, the overhydration, I'm drinking upwards of a gallon, sometimes more than a gallon per day. But then I'm going to talk a little bit about the supplements that can help and some of those other little details. So stay tuned for that. But anyway, I just want to say that constant thinking and decision fatigue is huge. So do what you can to meet your baby's needs. Use an app, use trackers, a journal, whatever you need to, so that you take more off your brain. So you free some of it up for yourself. The next thing I'd like to talk about is uh, some of the hormonal regulation. You know, sometimes you wake up crying or some, some days like you could eat a meal and then the next thing you know, you're just like angry or you're just picking apart everything in your house or you're being irritable with your husband or friends or parents or whatever it be, or you're just feeling really kind of blue uh, with your baby. And, And I'm not here to talk about postpartum depression. I cannot speak to what I feel either prevents it, but I could hypothesize and let's just wonder together and put it into practice just to see how much our nutrition and caring for ourselves and working with our mind mindset and emotions can help with this. And and I can't help but wonder, especially where you guys know I have been diagnosed with depression and bipolar uh, before in my life over 10 years ago. So I do know I have a propensity for this. So I was very, very mindful going into the postpartum experience saying, what am I going to do to set myself up for success? How will I prevent any of this as much as possible? And I do feel extremely passionate about the small frequent meals, the PVCF meals, the hydration, getting out of the house. I know a lot of women are like, "Uh uh-uh, I'm not going anywhere for three months. I personally chose not to do that. I felt good about taking my baby, of course, in the car seat with a cover, but getting out of the house, not, not going and, you know, purposely being around tons of people that are sick, but going to friend's house for visits, scheduling them saying, Hey, I am coming to your house Thursday at 11 o'clock and we're going to visit for an hour or going to run errands with her, not being afraid to leave the house because I knew that was more about my mental health than anything else. And I've had other moms being like, geez, you are really chill when it comes to that. Like you're out and about and doing this. I'm like, well, inside, I'm like, you don't realize like, this is really important. This was what I told myself in the beginning I would need to do to keep sane. And so that's something as well as taking St. John's wort. If you are not on anxiety or depression medication, then this is an herb. It's over the counter supplement. I have talked about it a lot in previous podcasts. Take three to four capsules when you're just off, you know, you're irritable. You just want to throw dishes and you're just like, ah, what is wrong with me? I hate the world, everything. And you and I both know those moods can just come from nowhere and there's no reason for it. You can't put words to why you're feeling the way you are. And maybe sometimes there is a reason if you were to dig deep and really psychologize yourself and have a friend do some deep introspection. However, sometimes we just aren't in the mindset to do that. And so taking St. John's wort three to four capsules can be extremely helpful, especially if you're just having a lot of bouts of crying, not to say tears are bad. Like I let the tears flow when they come and and I cry over dumb things and I cry over not dumb things and I allow my tears to to come and that's okay. But if it's excessive, which only you can define that, then consider this. 
Well, my friends, this wraps up our first little episode on postpartum and breastfeeding. I don't know how many more episodes will come, but I... Oh, hello. Aaliyah is done. She is done with me recording. So I will have a few more coming out because I have more to say about the food and the food prep, the mindset, expectations, uh, supplementation, milk supply, etc. So stay tuned for additional episodes. And until then, make sure you are following Power Foods Lifestyle on Instagram as well as join Power Foods Lifestyle Champions Facebook group. That's a place to interact with others. I make posts and the education and, and motivation there. Remember, you can always reach me at powerfoodslifestyle at gmail.com for any coaching inquiries. I am definitely taking on much fewer uh, numbers of clients due to my new stage in life. However, I do have a few slots open if you are looking to begin before the new year. So I hope you will continue to make the choice to power your body one meal, one workout, and one day at a time. One final reminder, the information in this episode is provided for informational purposes and is not meant to substitute the advice provided by your own physician or medical professional. Goodbye, Leah. That's a good goodbye.